God is great and greatly to be praised. Good morning to you that's watching this virtual this morning. We welcome you here at Blessed Assurance Community Church. We pray today will be a blessing to you and the word be richly in your heart today. Amen. God is good. Amen. So I want to this morning go back to the book of Judges chapter 6 where I'm preaching the call of Gideon. Amen. Judges chapter 6, beginning at verse 24. Amen. Down to 32. Let's have church today. Amen. Begin at verse 24 this morning. It says, Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, as we read last week, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet an offer of the Ebrites and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullet of seven years old. Throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had. Cut down the groves that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock. In the order, place. And take the second bullet and offer a burnt offering sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou hast cut down. And Gideon took ten men of his servant and did as the Lord has said unto him. And so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the groves was cut down that was by it. And the second bullet was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, who has done this thing? And when they had inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, have done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he has cast down the altar of Baal, because he has cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will you plead for Baal? Will you save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death. With it yet mourning, if he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one has cast down his altar. Therefore, on that day, he called him Jerubbabel, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he has thrown down his altar. Amen. I'm just going to preach from a simple subject this morning, tear down the altar of Baal. Amen. God, you're so good. And this morning, Lord God, I ask you for your help. Lord God, Father, we just praise you and thank you. You said this morning, Lord God, be not afraid of their faces. So, Lord God, I bring the word this morning that you use me this morning. Let the spirit of the Lord be upon me this morning. Let them hear from you and not from man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many men. I don't plan to be before you very long this morning, but God is good. 
Last week we left where Gideon was called by the Lord. The angel of the Lord visited him and told him that he was a mighty man of valor. Gideon said he's the, post, the, the, the poorest and the least in his father's house. That he's not qualified for the job. Amen. But God says, I will be with you. And that's the promise that Gideon got. And I'm here this morning to tell you, if God tells you something, all you need to do is stand on his promises. It will come to pass. And no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Have God not said it? And will not God perform it? He's an awesome and he's a mighty God. And you have to learn to take him at his word. Amen. Sometimes God has to get us and take us out of our shell of shyness, shamefulness. Amen. People can make you feel so inadequate. Amen. And he was probably always put down that he was a nobody. And last week we learned and we studied that he was grinding meal under the wine press because of the Midianites. Am I right? The Midianites had oppressed God's people for seven years. And when the angel comes to Gideon, Gideon is so disturbed that a person like him would even be chosen to lead God's people into victory. Gideon, we know, last week, set up an offering for the Lord. And after that, he built an altar. Amen. And after he built the altar, he realized that he had seen the angel of God face to face. And he knew what the scriptures said, that if you ever see God face to face, you were surely going to die. But God let him know, today you're not going to die because I have plans for your life. Amen. Gideon then builds an altar and call it Jehovah Shalom, mean God of peace. Amen. And when God gives you peace. Amen. He'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. These men in the camp was mad because Gideon had thrown down their altar. Amen. You know, people don't like for you to mess with their idols. Amen. People will kill you if you're a preacher or a child of God and talk about celebrities. Amen. 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 Sometimes I don't think that, just like I was in the world, you don't know you're under some type of influence. Anytime you can sit down and protect someone that is a comedian that puts down the name of the Lord and use his name, amen, to get a laugh, talking so nasty out of their mouths, and you, as a child of God or a preacher, say something about them, they're ready to defend them. Ah, oh, you shouldn't talk about them. Well, they're talking about my God. If they can talk about my God, I can talk about them. Amen. If they can use my God to make a movie, yeah, and use his name and take his name in vain, amen, I, I think I have the right to speak against them. Because I am a defender of the faith. Amen. God is good. Amen. Gideon builds this altar. He's afraid. But God let him know that I'm the God of peace. If you serve me, you have peace. Like I said last week, no God, no peace. To know God is to know peace. He'll give you peace. That surpasses all understanding. 
Sometimes God will bring you through something. You say, I don't know how I got through it. But it couldn't be nobody but God. He's an awesome God. Yeah. Even at the time when God destroyed the whole earth. Tells Noah, go ahead on. Build me an ark. Amen. People laughed at Noah. But the rain came, am I right? He told Noah, it says, take all the animals two by twos. Because you're going to need something to reproduce the earth again with. They all got in the ark that God had prepared. Amen. Obedience will save your lives and save the lives of others. Noah got in the ark and people says, there ain't no rain coming. All we ever seen was do, but it rained. Forty days and forty nights, it rained until the earth was subdued and destroyed. Noah was so afraid to get out of the ark that he sent birds out, and the birds, uh huh, never came back. He knew then that there was water still on the earth and not to open the doors of the ark. But later on, many days later, he sent out a dove. And the dove came back with an olive branch. And the olive branch represents peace. That means that God had peace. He was giving Noah peace. The same as he's giving Gideon. You can't be disturbed when God called you. When God called you, you will have fears. And there's nothing wrong with asking God and questioning God. Is it really you? Gideon runs back in the house and said, Oh, my Lord, if you be with me, let me go inside the house and bring you an offering. He brings him an offering, as we read last week, to bring you up to speed. Brings him an offering. The Lord says, take your meat, your bread, and put it on that rock. Amen. Now I want you to take all the juice and the broth that's in that pot and pour it on the top. Gideon sat back and watched. And the angel of the Lord took his staff and touched that sacrifice. And fire came up from the rock. Amen. Gideon must have had to, he must have looked and says, I know it can't be nobody but God. Because ain't no stove there. Ain't no fuel there. But yet God consumed my offering. With fire. That's the way God is when God called you. He'll put fire inside of you. That's why I stand before you every Sunday and not fearful. If I get tied up or tongue tied, God will bring me out. Because you know why? I got the fire inside of me. Amen. The Bible said the letter kill it. But the spirit. Gives his life. You can't preach intelligent. But when you preach, you got to preach with the spirit. Amen. God is good and he's awesome. He's a mighty God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was telling y'all a story this morning about the, the woman with the three buggies pushing up and down the road. She said, why were you attracted to me? I said, it's just like Philip. You know the Bible. She said, yes, I do. I said, Philip was down in Samaria, and the Spirit of the Lord said, join yourself uh -huh, up to that chariot. Yeah, you got three chariots out there. And, the, and the Philip said to the eunuch, understand, amen, what thou readest, amen. And he said, how can I accept some man help me? And I was trying to explain her to her, you know the word. 
and thy word you should have hid in your heart. So when you hear the word of God, I said, I don't care what kind of spirit that's on you. Amen. I said, there was a man in the tomb. You know the Bible. I said, there was a man in the tomb. I said, but the only way he got the spirits up off of him, he had to call on Jesus. He ran to Jesus, and Jesus asked him, what was his name? And the man said, my name is Legion, because there's many inside of us. I'm here today to tell you that when God get ready for, to use you, you got to have some fire inside of you, because you'll sit here and preach, and everybody look at y'all, and like you're confused, but you're not confused because... You're preaching God's word. They're confused because they don't understand God's word and the way God operates. You can't be a preacher. God ain't give you the spirit of fear. So Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Gideon is still scared that he's going to get killed. Because God say, go and tear down your father's altar. Tear down the altar of Baal. First of all, let me say this to you. The children of Israel got in trouble. God explained to them, amen, why they was in bondage like they were. Seven years, amen? Forty years, he said, I brought you out. Led you through the wilderness and took care of you and told you you're not to serve no other gods. Amen? Amen? Canaan had them, amen, in bondage for 18 years. God gave them over to another king, but they still wouldn't listen. Amen? But each time they would get in trouble, God would send a deliverer to them. Amen? Get in, as y'all remember last week, when the angel called him, he says, if God is still with us, why are we suffering? And where's all the miracles that our fathers told us about? And why are we so oppressed, so poverty stricken, hiding in caves? Amen. Then, earlier, Gideon don't know that God has sent a prophet. It says, when the people cried for help, God sent them a prophet. And the prophet told them, he said, thus said the Lord, I brought you out of bondage. And now you went right back to bondage. I told you that you should have no other God. But me. Uh, but you wouldn't serve Astra, Dagon, Baal, and all these other small gods that someone uh, carved uh -huh, with their hands. He says, think about it. Uh huh. What he says, look at your history, and then you'll know why. God is putting you through this here. Look at your history, how you've been treating God. Look at your history, how you've been going whoring from one mountain to another mountain. Look at your history, how you murmured and complained against God. Look at your history, how God brought you out of the house of Pharaoh. And look at your history and see how you act in the wilderness and see how you're acting now. Don't ask me why God is treating you this way. Look at your history. Tell somebody, look at your history. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Look at your history. 
Look at how you've been treating God. God would deliver you. But every time God would deliver you, and still you stand with the true God, you go right back to the little gods. Amen? You go back to the fertility God. The God that send rain. Uh-huh, because you think he can grow crops for you. And then you take your babies and sacrifice them to Baal. Uh, then you prostitute your women to Baal. Uh, the spirit of Baal is still here today. The spirit of Baal wants to separate you from worshiping God. Anytime you don't want to worship God, that's the spirit of Baal. Anytime you can look at uh -huh, and listen to other music and programs on TV. But when it comes down to listen to God, uh, you ain't got no time for God. Yeah, but God is the one that brought all your instruments. God is the one that brought the car that you drive to the beaches and to the mountains with. But you don't give God no praise. Uh huh. You give yourself praise. And, and God says, I'm tired of you having all these bales and, and fertility idols and stuff. And all these idols around you. And so God tell Gideon, mm -hmm. you're going to deliver my people. But Gideon still looked down on himself. But I'm here today to tell you, it's not because God doesn't love his people. God loves his people. But he's trying to bring them back up under his wings. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody he's trying to bring them. In Psalms 91, it says, he that dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Amen. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowls and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thy trust, his truth, shall be thy shield and thy buckler. God had already told them, amen, in Exodus chapter 20. And God spake these words in the Ten Commandments, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. This is one of the Ten Commandments. Amen. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven. Above, amen. Above. So that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. And thou shalt not bow, bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, and unto them that hate me. Amen. God, you're an awesome and you're a mighty God. Hallelujah, I said you're awesome and you're a mighty God. Amen. Amen. You can't have no other God but God. I said you can't have no other God but God. Amen. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. God has given him the name that's above every name. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Amen. God, you're so awesome and you are so mighty. But as I get ready to close here, get in. He thinks because he has repented and has made an altar. So he showed God that he could make an altar. Amen. He showed God that he could do sacrifice. And God said, now, since you done showed me all this here, uh-huh, 
and you think that you have repented, and that's good enough. You see me face to face, and that's good enough. Well, I got news for you, Gideon. That's not good enough. And what I need for you to do, if you're going to follow my orders and you're going to try to lead someone else, the first thing I need for you to do before you lead someone else, go to your father's house where Baal has been erected. Uh-huh. See, Baal was erected on the land that Gideon's father owned. And God said, if you're going to start somewhere, start with yourself. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, if you're going to start somewhere, start with yourself. And if you're going to help somebody, uh-huh, uh-huh, start with yourself first. Because I heard David say, create in me a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within me. And he said, when I am converted, I'll teach transgressors your ways. Tell somebody, tell somebody God got to get me uh -huh, straight now. Be first. I, he got to get me cleaned up first. He said, I can't use you and you still living in your father's house and all them idols. Uh -huh, because when I call Abraham, I told Abraham, get away from your kindred. And see, that's the problem some of us have. We're still hanging around with idols that our mamas and our daddies and, and all them generational curses and stuff that we just can't seem to tear down the devil he is a liar uh -huh. mama might have played the number but I ain't playing the number daddy might have played the number but I ain't played the number uh-huh tell somebody the devil he is a liar say my uncle might believe in witchcraft and go down and, and go down to see Dr. Busser but I don't believe in witchcraft uh-huh tell somebody you got to tear down the idols and so God say the first place you got to start getting you got to start at your house uh-huh because judgment begins at the house uh, that you live in uh huh. your house is the house uh, that everybody inside of the city when they come from their caves uh, go up to your daddy's land uh, and they bow down to Baal uh, and this wooden pole called Astra he said but you got to tear down if you believe in me want to walk with me uh, you got to go and tear down tell somebody uh, it's time to tear down some things uh, I heard Moses tell the children of Israel uh, you got to choose ye this day whom you going to serve uh, I'm here the day to tell somebody you got to learn that you got to tear down some things in order to prove yourself that you love God tell somebody tell somebody some things got to be thrown out when me and my wife got saved we said something got to go it was hard for us uh, to throw away our albums and stuff, Ashford and Simpson uh, and James Brown, uh, all these idols we got around us and, but we said we shall serve no other body but God, I'm here today uh, God said you can't serve two gods, uh, he said you two time me, either it's going to be me uh, or it's going to be the small God tell somebody, I can't serve no other God, uh, tell somebody baby I got to let you go, uh, I don't care how good you can sing but you're singing secular and I can't have you as my because I got to sing now at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart roll away till somebody it was dead could God I might I receive my sight and now I'm happy all the day and I ain't got no time to let that stuff in my spirit that's why the Bible say you got to watch which good God I might how you run against for everything we study about Samson third Thursday night and some y'all didn't even catch on y'all say well that's just the lust of the eye uh uh baby anytime you keep going to a prostitute house keep going to a holler house you trying to satisfy that flesh I'll teach you the difference between the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye coming this Thursday. But you're trying to please your flesh. And God said, you can't have it both ways, baby. Uh-uh, uh-uh, tell somebody. You can't have it both ways, do you not? That your body is the temple of God. And should I go and take my body and join it to a holler? Tell somebody, God forbid, God forbid. So God say, now if you're going to get this thing straight, the first thing you got to go and start tearing down some things inside of your house. Good God, I'm I start cleaning 
cleaning up my room and stuff. And when I start preaching, uh huh, I start preaching. I, I was somewhere in a little yard, see, and they had this little man that looked like a rabbi. And I said, Well, he's gonna be inspiring to me here. I put rabbi on my wall. I put the man's picture. Don't even know who the man is, but I don't know who, who that man might be. He might worship God, he might not worship God. Because let me tell you, everybody's a rabbi, don't believe in Jesus. Could God Almighty, but when I start cleaning up this year, I say, Rabbi, you got to go. I took Rabbi down and put my grandma, my granddaddy, up on the wall. Tell somebody it's time to tear down some things, little old stuff and trinkets you don't picked up in the yard sales and the flea market. You don't know what, what kind of house that came out of. You don't know how they serve God. Tell somebody the devil is a lie. You brought something in your house now, and all of a sudden you don't got sick in your marriage. It's tore from the floor. The devil is a liar. Till somebody's time to clean house. God said, if you're going to clean house, start at your own house. Gideon said, well, he said, let me think about it. God said, ain't no time to think about nothing. Either you're going to do it or you ain't going to do it. And Gideon said, well, wait a minute. He said, well, let me do it by night and not by day. He said, because I know how these evil people are. And if they see me going tearing down, Baal, they're going to kill me sure as I live. But the Bible says he came by night and cut down the altar bell and then they woke up the next morning all the town folks they mad because Gideon done cut down bail cook God am I that's why people come to church and you jump on their idols and jump out in their garage and they get all mad but I'm here today baby I can't put the cart before the horse I got to show you baby you got to get rid of some things before you can make it into heaven the devil is a liar you can't come to church and have it your way. This ain't Burger King, baby. This ain't no drive-through service. And this ain't no buffet. Tell somebody, good God, I'm out of here. You got to tear down some things. How can I lead people and they still worshiping Baal? The devil is a liar. How can I lead people and they still doing the lecture slide on the floor? Good God, I'm out of here. But the devil is a liar. Tell somebody, I'm trying to preach so you can change partners. Tell somebody, say, he's trying to preach so you can change partners. Good God Almighty. Say, so ain't in the nightclub. Somebody always walking up to you. Tell my baby, you want to dance. Tell somebody, I don't dance to them no more. I dance to a new tune. The devil is a lie. Baby, let me buy you a drink. No, you can't buy me a drink because all I drink is Kool-Aid and water now. I don't put no spirits in my body that I can't drive and I don't know which way I, I went and who I slept with. The devil is a liar. Tell somebody, I serve a true God. And so God say, get in. You got to cut down these groves and get in cut down the groves but to show you how people were so into bail they woke up the next morning and said to themselves who would do a thing like this who will cut down our place of worship who? Who would do this? Who? Somebody leaked it out. It was Gideon. They said, where are we going to get his house? And we're going to kill Gideon. Stop trying to kill the preacher. Stop trying to kill the messenger. He's trying to help you break free from something. Amen. You can't get the true blessings of God as long as you serve him. Bail in God. Hallelujah. He says, if you want to be blessed you got to cut ties there's people that don't mean you no good there's stuff in your cover that don't mean you no good you got to cut ties with it hallelujah 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 I know it's your father's house but you got to cut ties if you want to serve me. 
You got to stand up against your own father. And not only that, Gideon, not only that, Gideon, I want you to go and I want you to get two bulls, uh huh, from your father's livestock. And I want you to take them and pull down the altar of Baal. And the pole that's next to him that they worship. Cut him down. Take your father's bullocks that he owned. And he has erected on his land. Tear it down. And then one of the bulls that I want you to get. I want you to get the one that's seven years old. Because seven years. Uh, Y'all been in depression. For seven years, y'all ain't had no crops. For seven years, you've been bankrupt. For seven years, you've been grinding and grinding and grinding, but still not getting ahead. Take that bull the seven years, and I want you to sacrifice him to me. When you kill him, that's going to kill the curse that's on the people. He said, now I want you to tear it down. And when you tear it down, then I want you to take that bull. Uh huh, the seven years old. And I want you to take the sticks that they used to worship, mm -hmm, Baal on and Astra. And I want you to hang the new sacrifice, uh huh, and burn it on the new altar. Tell somebody there's got to be a new altar, not an altar that you come and cry crocodile tears. Not an altar that you come and manipulate God. That if God give you, you give God a thousand. God is obligated to give you ten thousand. But you got to come to God just as you are. Broken, weary, worn, and sad. God say now you got to prove to me that you love me more than you love your daddy. And could God Almighty and get in, did everything that God say do. Understand this here. If you're going to have a new life, you got to have a new foundation the Bible say if any man be in Christ old things have passed away and behold all things have become new I'm here today to tell you God is a right now God and God say when I see you do what I tell you to do he said can't nobody touch you. Gideon was all scared when the men had him in the city but then all of a sudden something changed tell somebody something changed Instead, you would think Gideon's father would say, well, you done cut down the altar of Baal that was on my property. And you don't have a right to do that. You done took two of my bullets and killed them without asking me. You don't have a right to do that. He said, he could have said, and... Now you got me in trouble with the city and all the people in the city. And not only that, the many nights are going to know about him. But instead of the daddy turning against Gideon, uh -huh, the daddy came out to the crowd. And he said to the crowd, they say, bring us your son that we may kill him. But I heard Joash say, will you? Plead for Baal. If Baal is a God, let God, let Baal defend himself. Good God Almighty. He said, if anybody here today that want to plead for Baal, let them be put to death before in the morning. In other words, now Gideon then gave his father some courage to stand up to the people and say, this idol and this altar should have been torn down a long time ago. Could God Almighty, look how we're living. We're living in fear. Look how we're living. We're living all raggedly and we're God's people. And then the father said now, he said my son Jerubal, he gave him a nickname. He said now let Baal come after him and let Baal be his, uh -huh, his adversity. Let Baal be against 
to him. He said, but y'all shouldn't be trying to fight for Baal because if he's a God, he should be able to defend himself. Tell somebody, if Baal is a God, he should be able to defend himself. But you know what? Now, I believe Gideon got courage now because now Gideon got a nickname. His name used to be Gideon, but now his name is Zerubbabel. Tell somebody he's got a nickname now. And because he's got a nickname now, everybody now is ready to follow him. Tell somebody he's ready to get him some soldiers now. Could God Almighty Gideon blow the trumpet and the people start coming to the city? Because you know why? They say if this little wimpy man that's not a wimp anymore can stand up and tear down the altar of Baal, could God Almighty by himself, we got to stand with this man. Tell somebody, we got to stand with the word of God and we got to stand on the word of God. Tell somebody it's time for the altar of Baal to come down. Gideon's no longer a wimp now, but he's a mighty man of God. Of God. Tell somebody he's a mighty man of valor. Tell somebody I'm no longer a wimp now, devil. And I want you to know I'm not scared of you. Every time you try to come up to me and tell me to worship this and worship that, I'm going to be like the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys in the fire. We ain't going to bow down. Tell somebody we ain't going to bow down. You tell us every time we hear the music, we got to dance again. Tell somebody I don't dance to that music no more. The devil he is a liar. Could God Almighty, Lord have mercy, even Ahab. Y'all know the story of Ahab. He went married a woman of Baal. Tell somebody, don't marry a woman of Baal to no man of Baal. Marry somebody that know the Lord. Tell somebody, I got to marry somebody that know God. Tell somebody, say, Lord, thank you for using Gideon. Is there anybody here today that can say, Lord, thank you for good God Almighty using Gideon? Say, Lord, I thank you. Now the Father has been converted. Tell somebody, sometimes you got to show your parents they walk in in the wrong light and the wrong with the wrong God. Tell somebody, now the dad has been converted. He, he said, y'all not going to kill my son because he cut down a statue. Tell somebody, you better start thinking, could God Almighty, what God done done for you? Tell somebody, the devil he is a liar. Say, if it comes to my God and it comes to Baal, tell somebody, Baal got to go. Tell somebody, could God Almighty, tell somebody, it's time to get your hammer. It's time to get your axe and dismantle the, the statue and the altar of Baal. Baal got you down in God. And this is the way Baal is. Baal will have you down in God. This is why people come to Baal. They say, well, I prayed and I prayed. I'm just like Martha. If you had been here, Lord, my mama wouldn't have not died. And the Lord, and here come Baal now. Baal say, now, you prayed to God, and God didn't answer your prayers. He ain't really no God. He is it. Could God Almighty. Somewhere I read in 9-11, people lost their family members. Could God Almighty. And they said they don't believe in God no more. They say, why you don't believe in God? They say, when 9-11 struck, say, my God died at 9-11 because he didn't save my mom and daddy in that tower. Could God Almighty. That's the way the devil is. The devil come and tell you. Say, look here, you've been praising God and worshiping God. Look what condition you in now. Could God Almighty. You can't even find a job. But I'm here today. You better tell that devil. Devil, you a lie. Because my God shall come through. And I learned to be content. Whatever state I'm in, I know God. He's able. Tell somebody. God, he's able. But the devil, Baal will plant a seed in your mind huh, and tell you God ain't no good but tell somebody God is still good yes he is yes he is he's good in the evening he's good in the nighttime. he's good when I'm up and he's good when I'm down he's good he's good he's good he's good hey amen he's good tell somebody he's good Moses come down off the mountain he got to destroy the golden calf and the altar that Aaron done built. It's time to destroy the golden calves and get back to God. Anytime someone, I don't mean to put people down, and I'm not calling people's names, but all they got to do is preach about money and money and money and money every day, every week. That's the golden calf. Because you ain't looking for God. You come looking for a dollar. And I'm one preacher, I ain't going to build your golden calf. It ain't going to happen. Josiah tore down the altars of Beltham, destroyed all the groves. You got to learn 
that you got to listen to God. When you a leader, you got to listen to God. And God said, you can't teach nobody else and you can't help nobody else. When people walking around and they see that Baal is erected in your father's house. I never forget the story. Holding this preaching, Church of God in Christ. He said, when we was growing up, y'all used to tell us we had to give, give up everything. He said, when we came up, we couldn't have a TV. And he says, because that was Satan. And I heard another man say, you know, they used to tell us we couldn't have no television. We couldn't look at this. We couldn't look at that. Until I went with Bishop so-and-so house and say so he had three TVs. And this is the problem now. We was coming up. They say you got to give up this and give up that. Now everything changed. You ain't got to give up nothing. You can live just like you are. And you still say. You can live like you want to live and still serve in the capacity of the church. I wasn't stupid at that. Can I just tell you a short story? I used to be a gambler. Amen. And I love to sit at the table and gamble. Roll dice. Shoot dice. Three or four o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden, man got up and said, I got to go. I said, man, you can't take the money from the table. Where you going? Oh, man, I got to get up in the morning because I got to. He didn't tell me he was a deacon or he got to sing on the choir. But he's sitting down drinking 50 cent shots. Gambling all night. Gonna get up in the morning, probably brush his teeth and goggle. And head on to church. Some people don't see nothing wrong with that Saturday night. Dancing on the dance floor. And then serving God. And all I can say, like an old lady said, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. And I wasn't even saved then, but I made up my mind that if I'm going to serve God, I'm going to serve him all the way. I know I can't serve him with no liquor bottle and a deck of cards in my hand. Still got a lot of things to give up, but that's one thing I learned. I got to Get ready for church. You mean to tell me here is three or four o'clock in the morning? And you going to sit in the church, pray for somebody, take collections, play the pianos and sing. That's serving two gods. Am I right? We got to tear down some altars. And the altars are bail. And we got to be serious. They told us when we come to church, you have to give this up, give that up. Amen. And now people got to give nothing up. Come as you are. Stay as you are. But we got to tear down the idols of Baal. Generational curses, idolatry. Amen. Amen. God said, get rid of it in your house first. Amen. Gideon thought he was all right because he had repented. He definitely thought he was all right because he had seen the angel and gave God a name. You can't stroke God and make God feel good. God's still going to make you do the right thing. 
Tell somebody, God's still going to make you do the right thing. If he got to make you good on get on all fours and make you crawl, he's going to make you do the right thing. Yeah. 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 We had to be like David. Lord, search me. Search my reign. Search my heart. And see if there be anything in me that you don't like. Let's stand. It's time to go home. I'm so glad I got through this today. God's got a victory plan for you. Amen. Every fear, every doubt, you got to tear it down. Hallelujah. You got to tear it down. Every thought of unbelief. The spirit of Baal is unbelief. Amen. Remember this today. You can't serve two gods. Anyone watching today, I pray today that the message has been a blessing to you and that you will give your life to the Lord. The Bible says, who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And his name is Jesus. You must believe that he died and he rose on the third day and he shed his blood for you. Ask him to be your Lord of your life and come into your life. Ask him to save you. In the name of Jesus, he loves you and we love you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, for Christ's sake, amen and amen.